Dear friends, I am Dr. K. Kannan, Professor Mechanical Engineering, Anjaliyamal Mahalingam Engineering College, Kovil Binni. I am happy to meet you again in the solution and discussion on UPSC Engineering Series Examination Mechanical Engineering Questions in the topic Boiler and Steam Nozzle. So, this is lecture number 30. There are few questions in the boiler and uh, few questions on the steam nozzle. The first question from 2019 question paper, which of the following statement is or correct regarding the superheat in the boilers? It is a heat exchanger in which heat is transformed to the saturated steam to increase its temperature. It raises the overall efficiency. It reduces the turbine internal efficiency. So, which, is, which, of, which of the uh, three statements are correct, uh, we have to select. So, here first statement is correct. So, it is a heat exchanger, superheater is a heat exchanger in which heat is transferred to convert the saturated steam into the superheated steam. So, increasing the temperature of the saturated steam and it increases overall efficiency. The third statement is not correct. So, the option A, statement 1 and 2, they are correct. The next question from 2020 question paper, the economizer in a steam generator performs the function of preheating. Economizer is used to preheat the feed water. So, feed water is the correct answer. Economizer, superheater and the air preheater, they are the three accessories. Economizer is used to heat the feed water. Next question from 2021 question paper, all power plant use superheated steam due to which? due to which of the following advantages. One, superheating is mostly done from waste heat of boiler without additional cost of the fuel. The plant efficiency increases due to higher temperature of the steam. There is less corrosion and erosion of equipment due to the absence of moisture in the steam. So, which of the uh, three statements are uh, correct? So, here superheating is mostly done from the waste heat of the boiler without additional fuel cost. So, the statement 1 is wrong, the other two statements are correct. So, statement 2 and 3 are correct. The plant efficiency increases due to the higher temperature of the steam. Because of the superheating, there is less possibility of corrosion, erosion of the equipment is very less because of the, uh, is absent because of the moisture, there is no moisture in the steam. Next question from 2021 question paper, which of the following are advantages of pulverized coal firing? Higher boiler efficiency, fast response for no load changes, ability to use low preheated air reducing internal losses, ability to release large amount of heat enabling it to, gen to generate about 2000 tons per hour of steam in one boiler. So, among the four statements, statement 1 and 4 they are correct. Pulverized coal firing, it gives higher boiler efficiency and we can produce the steam up to 2000 tons per hour in a single boiler. These are all the advantages of pulverized coal firing. The next question from 2020 question paper, in RSAT apparatus, when the percentage of carbon dioxide, oxygen and carbon monoxide are known, the remaining gas is assumed to be hydrogen, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen and the air. So, RSAT apparatus is used to analyze the exhaust gases from the boiler. The exhaust gas contains carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide due to incomplete combustion and there will be oxygen, excess oxygen and in addition to that remaining portion is nitrogen because we are taking only air, air contains oxygen, oxygen is participating in the combustion process and nitrogen is in it and that will appear in the exhaust gases as nitrogen. Next question from 2021 question paper, your fuel consists of 92 percentage of carbon, 7 percentage of hydrogen and remaining residual matter by mass. Working from the first principle, the higher calorific value of the fuel. We have four options. We calculate the higher calorific value, HCV equal to percentage of carbon into 4,7000 divided by 12 plus percentage of hydrogen into 1,43,000. So, 12 is the molecular weight of the carbon. So, substituting 0 0.92 into 4,7000 divided by 12 plus 0 0.07 into 1,43,000 equal to 31,203.3 plus 10,010 equal to 41,213.3 kilojoules per kilogram. 
the closer answer is 41,176 kilojoules per kilogram. It is the calorific value of the fuel. Match the following. Next question from 2022 question paper. Match the following. We have one side, the four different types of high pressure boiler, Lamont boiler, low flow boiler, Benson boiler, Velox boiler. And the other side, we have the pressure in kilogram force per centimeter square. So, matching Lamont boiler, the pressure is 170 kilogram force per centimeter square. Low floor boiler, it is around 135. And the Benson boiler, it is around 230. And the Velox boiler is 84 kilogram force per centimeter square. Next question from 2022 question paper. What is the amount of air required to burn 1 kg of fuel? And the product of combustion for a fuel, the percentage of combustion is given by C, carbon equal to 70 percent, hydrogen equal to 30 percentage. So, we are given the carbon percentage in fuel is 70 percent, hydrogen percentage is 30 percent. What is the amount of heat required for burning 1 kg of fuel? So, the air fuel ratio for complete combustion, air fuel ratio equal to 11.6 times of carbon plus 34.8 into H minus O by 8. So, O is the oxygen percentage divided by 8. So, here 11.6 into 0.7 percentage of carbon is 70, 0 0.7 plus 34.8, hydrogen percentage is 30, 0 0.3, oxygen percentage is not given. So, the second part is left out. So, calculating it is 18.56 kilogram per kilogram of fuel. So, the amount of air required is 18.54 kilogram per kilogram of fuel. Next question from 2014 question paper, question from steam nozzle, the effect of considering friction in the steam nozzle for the same pressure ratio leads to increase in drainage fraction of exist, exist steam, decrease in drainage fraction of the exist steam, no change in the quality of the exit steam, decrease or increase in drainage fraction of the exit steam depending on inlet quality. So, this is the HS diagram of the nozzle. So, 1 to 2 is the isentropic expansion, 1 to 2 dash is the actual expansion due to the frictional effect. So, if you look at here, the drainage fraction of the steam is increasing. So, 2 x2 is here and x2 dash is here, x2 dash is higher than x2. So, the friction causes increase in drainage fraction of the steam. Next question, in a convergent divergent nozzle, the velocity at the throat of the nozzle is given by. So, we have four options. The correct answer is square root of 2n p1 v1 divided by n plus 1 is the pressure at the uh, pressure ratio at the uh, convergent divergent nozzle and we will see how in the next slide. Velocity of the throat v2 equal to square root of 2n by n minus 1 p1 v1 into 1 minus p2 by p1 to the power n minus 1 by n. So, this is the velocity of the steam at the throat section. So, the critical pressure ratio we derived P2 by P1 equal to 2 by N plus 1 to the power N by N minus 1. Substituting P2 by P1 here, so V2 equal to square root of 2 N by N minus 1 P1 V1 into 1 minus 2 by N plus 1 to the power N by N minus 1 into N minus 1 by N. So, this becomes 1. N by N minus 1 into N minus 1 by N equal to this 1. So, 2 N by N minus 1 P1 V1 into 1 minus 2 by N plus 1. So, 1 minus 2 by n plus 1 will become n minus 1 by n plus 1. So, n minus 1 is getting cancelled. So, this will become V2 equal to 2n by n plus 1 into P1 V1. It is the answer. Next question from 15, 2015 question paper. Consider the flow of steam through a convergent divergent nozzle under real condition where the super saturation occurs. The difference between saturation temperature and the corresponding to the pressure and the super saturated temperature is defined as the degree of undercooling, superheat, reaction and saturation. So, degree of undercooling. Degree of undercooling is the saturation temperature at the exit pressure minus temperature at the end of the super saturated flow which is called as degree of undercooling. Next question, there are two statements. Statement 1, super saturated expansion nozzle is the process in which the steam is expanded beyond the, beyond the saturated vapor line in superheated condition. Statement number 2, steam cannot exist in the superheated state where the expansion process is not reaches the saturated vapor line. So, among the two statements, statement 1 is true and statement 2 is false. So, beyond the saturation line, the steam continues as superheated steam uh, in the superheated, super saturated expansion in the nozzle. 
Next question from 2016 question paper. Such a super saturated flow occurs in the steam nozzle due to the delay in throttling, condensation, evaporation and the entropy, dro entropy drop. So, super saturated flow is due to the lack of due to the delay in the condensation process. So, after the saturation process, after the saturation line, the steam is expected to convert convert into the wet steam. There is there should be formation of water particle below the saturation line. The formation of water particle is delayed uh, below the saturation line because of the velocity of the steam. That process is called as condensation. Vapor converted into liquid particle is condensation. The condensation process is delayed uh, in the supersaturated flow. Next question from 2016 question paper. Under ideal condition, the velocity of the steam at the outlet of the nozzle for a heat drop of 450 kilojoules per kilogram from the inlet condition to the exist. So, we have four options. We calculate the velocity V2 equal to square root of 2 into H1 minus H2. So, square root of 2 into 450 into 1000 equal to 948.7 meters per second. So, the answer is option D, 949 meters per second. So, we stop here. So, these are all the books I have written and I upload the video lectures in the YouTube channel for all the subjects and the solution for gate question paper and the solution for engineering service exam question paper. You subscribe the channel, use the videos for better learning. Thank you for watching. Please post your comments on the comments box. If you have any queries, you can contact me. We will meet again in another video lecture in the solution to the engineering service exam questions. Until then, bye.